What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're going to talk about Alienware laptops and if they suck. Now Alienwares are notorious for being overpriced, very gaudy, very crazy lighting setups. Like there is more lights coming out of there than a freaking alien spaceship. Depending on who you talk to, there are lots of people out there that will say Alienwares are totally not worth the money. They're overpriced pieces of trash. And then other people who swear by them saying they have the best build quality, fantastic value for the money, great performance. Now I have owned multiple Alienware laptops in the course of my laptop buying history. Uh, I don't hate them, I don't love them, I think I have a very balanced view of them. So I'm gonna break down for you guys whether or not they're worth buying today. We're gonna be breaking this down with a list of pros and cons. To start things off, let's talk about the cons. Now when it comes to Alienwares, I think the number one con is that they have a thicker, heavier chassis. Now the main drawback to the Alienware design is that their focus is on cool lighting and high performance, which leads to a wider footprint, thicker chassis, and a heavier weight. Especially when you compare it to laptops with similar specs that are much thinner and lighter, such as the Aorus X5, Razer Blade 15, and the MSI GS65 Stealth. Now when you compare the Alienware 15 specs versus its size with these other laptops, it's not the best. The Aorus weighs in at 5.5 pounds, the Razer weighs in at 4.6 pounds, and the GS65 only weighs 4.1 pounds, while the Alienware 15 weighs 7.6 pounds, and this is remarkable because these have 15.6 inch display across all of these laptops. And you can see that when you take the length, width, and thickness and multiply them by each other, the Alienware 15 has a dramatically larger footprint. So if you're all about having the thinnest and lightest gaming laptop, the Alienware 15 is definitely not for you. Now it's true Alienware laptops are not low budget machines. When you compare the pricing of the Alienware 17 or 15 versus other budget models, it is just far more expensive. You're paying $200 to $400 extra for a number of bells and whistles. Now Alienware laptops are not the most expensive laptops out there. You can buy them for reasonable prices between $1,200 to $1,700 for a number of the base models. Alienware is made by Dell, but this is a laptop also also made by Dell. This is the Dell G7. It's based off their Inspirion lineup. It's almost identical, but it has some very good specs for the money. This has an 8750H, a six core processor, and a GTX 1060 Max-Q. When it comes down to getting the best bang for the buck, the Alienware lineup is just not where it's at. Now, some people have complained that ever since Dell bought out Alienware in 2006, that the quality control has been much weaker than before. As far as I know, no statistics exist for any laptop manufacturer in terms of quality control. It's just all hearsay. And here's the thing, all it takes is a handful of outraged customers, 1% of the 10,000 people that bought it, to post a whole bunch of negative reviews and ruin a brand's reputation. So in my opinion, every laptop manufacturer is gonna have quality control issues and they're gonna have laptops that are just delivered with mistakes, keys that don't work, touchpad that doesn't work, a screen with dead pixels. It happens out there for all manufacturers. The key here isn't to shy away from Alienware as a brand, but instead to buy your laptops from a quality retailer. My two personal favorites is Amazon and Best Buy for their very lenient return policies. And if you want a laptop that's quality checked before you get it, you can consider buying it from a third party custom reseller like HID Evolution, Exotic PC, Gentech PC. There's a bunch of them out there, but make sure that you buy it from a reputable third party reseller if you choose to go that route. Now I have no idea why, but Alienware has decided to abandon the SD card slot, which I think is just an absurd thing because many people are gonna be buying these machines for video editing and they now have to take a dongle with them. The technology keeps getting better, it keeps getting cheaper. I think they're here to stay and I think laptops that move away from a full-size SD card slot are making a big mistake. And for some reason, Dell has removed the full-size SD card slot on all of their main Alienware laptops. It just makes me sad. Now this con I call over and undercooled. So when you get an Alienware laptop, you have to keep this in mind. Yes, it is thicker, but if you overspec it, you can run into thermal throttling issues. For example, the new Alienware 15 R4 can be specced with an i9-8950HK and a GTX 1080 Max-Q GPU. While the GPU will likely not be thermally throttled, 
the CPU will be pretty much guaranteed even if you liquid metal it and you run it in an air conditioned environment. The forum posts I've read has CPU temperatures hitting almost 100 degrees and it's only averaging 4.1 gigahertz for the user that was benchmarking it, which in my opinion, if you're gonna spring for the money, you're gonna wanna get one that can properly cool that expensive hardware. There's two main versions of the Alienware 15 I'd consider. One has an 8750H with the GTX 1070 overclocked and the other has the i9-8950HK with a GTX 1080. And when you compare the two, both of the CPUs are gonna be limited with thermal throttling. When you overclock a GTX 1070 and you underclock a GTX 1080 for a Max-Q variant, you end up with nearly identical performance while the 1080 Max-Q variant ends up costing you a lot more money. At $950 more expensive, it only provided a 4.6% performance gain, which is obviously not worth it. Here's a couple of benchmarks I found from notebookcheck.net. It shows the more expensive version pulling 18, 505 in 3D Firestrike, while the cheaper 1070 version managed a 17, 675. That's only an 830 point difference or a 4.6 performance gain for $950, which is obviously not worth it. So the key here is when you're buying an Alienware, don't overspec it. There's only so much heat that that chassis can handle. And I think the $1650 version is right in the sweet spot. So here are the pros. Number one, Alienware focuses on performance over providing a super thin and light and sometimes flimsy chassis. While manufacturers like Razer and MSI are often focusing on making an ultra small compact laptop with decent, good gaming performance, Alienware is focusing on jamming as much performance into their laptops as possible and even overclocking the GPU. And they're able to do this because they're focused on making the chassis thicker and heavier, but then you end up with a thicker and heavier chassis. I personally like Oris's approach to gaming laptops because they do this high performance, but also in thinner and lighter-ish chassis. Take it or leave it, you've got the ultra compact, the medium compact, and the thicker ones like the Alienwares and the high performance MSIs or the Clevo chassis, those would also be the thicker high performance laptop. Now another great thing about the Alienware laptops is that they have incredible customized lighting. I mean, you can change so much about the laptop. You have lights on almost every angle of the laptop and the touchpad even lights up and changes color as well. You also have four multi-zone controls over the keyboard. Now the only downside here is this four zone multi light up keyboard is starting to be a little bit outdated with many new laptops having RGB backlighting for the individual key so you can literally color each key exactly the color that you want it to be. Now I have loved every Alienware keyboard and touchpad that I've ever used. The touchpad has excellent drivers. It's a glass, super smooth touchpad, about as good as it can get on a Windows laptop. And then you have the keyboard, which has deep travel, soft keys, and a very tactile feel. I absolutely love it. The arrow keys are well placed. The backlighting is excellent. It's just a great overall experience. Now, one other thing you've really got to hand to Alienware is that they have great screen options. Now you can get your regular 1080p 60 Hertz panel, or you can spring for a high refresh rate 1080p panel, or you can get a 4K 60 Hertz panel. And on top of that, you can choose whether or not you want G-Sync with nearly all of these options. Which brings us to the next great thing about Alienware laptops, and that is that you can have really good battery life if you choose to bypass having G-Sync. So the reason why you can have much better battery life is that in order to enable G-Sync, the monitor has to be plugged directly into the dedicated graphics card, bypassing the potential of using the integrated graphics card in the processor. When you choose not to have G-Sync, they instead plug the monitor directly into the motherboard, which allows you to switch between the integrated graphics card or the dedicated graphics card, which allows for much better battery life when you're just doing schoolwork, typing documents, browsing the web, or watching videos on the go. Now, another strength for Alienware is that Dell has been known for having good customer support for a while here, and that is largely because they have many super large corporate clients that force them to have really good customer support. Just because I'm saying they have good customer support doesn't mean that they're amazing. The simple fact is Dell or any other laptop manufacturer cannot afford to pay people who really, 
really know what they're doing. They're still going to be reading off a menu of options. Okay, have you done this yet? Have you done this yet? But overall, they're going to handle their warranty service and repairs much better than the average laptop manufacturer. So should you buy an Alienware laptop sometime in the future? I personally don't think there are any giant glaring red flags like don't buy this laptop. If you love the way Alienware's look, if you're willing to pay a premium $200 to $400 and you're up for tweaking the laptop, undervolting it, potentially repasting it, then yes, I think Alienware laptops are a fantastic option. And one thing that's important to note here is that a lot of laptops out there are gonna have some level of thermal throttling or power limit throttling at the very least. So this isn't incredibly rare. It's not like it's awful. It's just unfortunate that it's not right in that perfect sweet spot right out of the box. Now, if you're in the market for a powerful 15 inch laptop, I think there are some other really good potential options. You've got the Aorus X5 V8, which is pricey, but will perform exceptionally well and is quite a bit thinner. Then you also have the Asus Zephyrus GX501. And if you want the ultimate level of performance and it's about the same weight, but maybe just a tad thicker, you've got the Clevo P750 from HID Evolution, AKA the Evoc 15. This is gonna give you the ultimate CPU performance, while at the same time giving you a full GTX 1080 in a 15 inch chassis. That, in my opinion, is the ultimate level of performance in a 15 inch laptop, albeit a, a 1.5 inch thick laptop, but still a laptop. So that's it for this episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. What'd you think? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down and let me know why. Now I am doing a big mega giveaway right now with the Razer Blade Pro iPhone 10 and an electric skateboard. I'll have a link in the top pinned comment down below if you'd like to check out that giveaway. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Brandon, out.